So it's the fifth segment of the Wine Challenge in Hollywood at k &L Wine Merchants with my friend Greg St. Clair. We've had some great tastings already. Rioja, 2009 Bordeaux, that was a big surprise. I mean, how are you going to top those two tastings? What do you have this time? Well, I never like to say top because every person's idea of wine, it's all so personal. But since we just did Cabernet and we're in California, we should do California Cabernet. Okay, and price point? This is the plus 40 price point. Plus, plus 40, I like plus that. Plus 40, you're right. Okay, if you're going plus 40, then it's got, I'm going to have to push the bar up slightly. Let's say 91 plus. I'm being easy. It probably should be 92, but I'm saying 91. It, they're your numbers. Okay, so. great. <laughs> And you know that California, sometimes I find a little bit overdone, a little bit too sweet, a little bit too much alcohol. So I'm curious. I'm much more into, let's say, classical style. And I think sometimes it's hard to find in California cabs. Well, we knew that. Price we knew that. And <laughs> n none of us are either, even though we sell a lot of those. Uh, everyone on the staff is always looking for some sort of refreshing point. But I Good think point. that this particular selection is going to offer you a different vision of what California is. That's fresh, that's clean, that's extraordinarily well made, layered, and speaks of Napa at the same yeah. time. And you guys are, your other store, we're in Hollywood, but your other store is really in the heart. I mean, San Francisco. Well, we have one in uh, Redwood City, our yeah. world headquarters, and then in San Francisco as well, but we're just an hour or so yeah, exactly. of Napa. Okay, cool. Let's try these. Mm, I like the nose. Very pretty purity of fruit. Not jammy, not overdone, not still, raisin. Still ripe in Napa, yeah. but... And that's the, the real key to these, I think, is you can't sell something that's Napa that doesn't taste like Napa. This still smells and tastes like Napa, but it's restrained, it's focused, it's got balance. What tastes like Napa, then? Mm. It's that broad, plummy richness yeah, on plums, the mid palate. That's what I said, yeah. Yeah, but it still has that little hint of earth where it doesn't get tutti fruity in the nose. Uh -huh. And so much of the sort of avant-garde, I made a half a barrel concept of uh, California Cabernet is, are flavors that I, I don't recognize as Cabernet. They smell like Zinfandel. Yeah, and uh -huh. funny, I remember uh, I read one time years ago, like Randy Dunn said, uh, well, I don't make fruit cocktails. Yeah. And sometimes wines from Napa and from Northern California, when they get that jammy character, they really don't resemble wine for me. Yeah, although um, we're in business to sell, and a whole lot of our customers like that style because there's, a huge, style. Yeah, there's a huge amount of people, and they probably wouldn't refer to it as candy. Right. Uh, but for us who get more experience in the old world, leaner wines, well, yeah, okay, they would seem that way. But these, I think, are the perfect layer of crossover mm -hmm. where they have enough richness for that person to enjoy, but at the same time... Someone with our uh, palate experience yeah. are going to taste that and say, wow, there's a lot going on there, a lot of richness, and I'm in California. I want to have that experience, but I, but I don't want to have any ponderous, heavy, exactly. thick, over, well, this, overripe, the, overly out. What I like about this, it keeps you coming back. I said it still needs another year or two to come together. It's showing pretty, you know, really pretty fruit, but also it has that backbone of tan in the city. I'm 92 on that. What is yeah. it? This is one of those... Classic names that a lot of people forget in the scurry to find all the, the latest things. But, uh, this Holy is Heights. Heights. This is their Trail 07 side trail game. side. What's the price? Sixty five ninety nine. Real estate in California is a lot more expensive. <laughs> but I like it. I'm 92 on it. It, is... it broke the 91 point level and, and it's delicious and it's what it's it's real California wine, what it's, I remember uh, yeah. growing up with. Yes, I'm, I'm the same way. This, this tastes like what I remember wines from the 70s and 80s. Wow, they had this kind of flavor. Exactly. It was that first step towards more richness instead of the classic martini, Sebastian yeah. Inglenook style. This was the next step towards more depth, more richness, uh, but really wonderful, wonderful character. Cool. like this wine a lot.
and it's 14.5, but doesn't seem that way. No, not at all. All right, let's try the second one. Surprised you didn't mention the glass. It's a much taller bottle. You know? Yeah. More elegant. Dead leaf. This is interesting because you get the pure fruit, but then there's also a, a, the tobacco, slightly fresh herb character, yeah. which is interesting because a lot of California producers, particularly in Napa, are afraid of that. Yeah. They want to really just almost burn it out. Right. This is almost a hint of that green olive kind of yeah. character in there. That when in when we were young, that was a common descriptor for Cabernet, and now it's a mm. four-letter word, even though there's more letters in olive. But oh, I like that wonderful balance. Oh, I love the finish. Yeah, it's one of my and favorite fresh. favorite wineries, and I've been following this particular pre winemaker uh, before. Uh, this particular incarnation, where they were before as well. But there's a there's a real um, mm. reserve to it. It's sort of held back, restrained, and then I love the texture. It's fresh. It's exciting. It's still plump, but it's got little intrigue of acidity and focus. Um, and it doesn't. Ha this is perhaps. Something that where the Heights, I think, is still classically Napa, yeah. where you can, most everybody who drinks anything from Napa can understand that wine. This is sort of what we find as the leading edge in Napa, the cleaner, brighter, more intellectual fruit Napa, rather than this, the ponderous hedonism. This really works for me. I'm 94 points on that. Yeah. Just because that freshness, freshness, and that liveliness, and the tannins. Wonderful balance. Wow. And these wines also age extraordinarily well, which, and fortunately, because this style hasn't always been extraordinarily popular, they have a lot of older vintages. That's cool. And to drink something, this is a... I'm going to just call me or something. Oh, of course. Okay. Sure. 2009. But I know we have the 01 on the shelf right now. Mm -hmm. That is, wow, it's so complex, showing so much character. An absolutely wonderful, Six, sixty-nine ninety-nine, wine. but superb wine. Really good stuff. But Kathy, you know, he was the winemaker at Cor uh, Chapelet way back in the day, oh, sure. and uh, made intriguing wines there. But on her own property, really has an intriguing understanding, such a deft touch uh, that most people don't really understand what's going on. In Napa, I mean, you're either way in the overripe stuff, yeah. or and, and for this, it doesn't seem like it's Napa. Almost. Very balanced. But still, the purity of fruit, that character, it still, to me, says Napa. It's just so much better balanced. Yeah. And focus. Yeah. Great call. What was the price again? $69.99. Mm. What? This really smells very Bordeaux-like with mm. leaves and tobacco. And it's very complex. Yeah. Oh my God! Currants. I love the note. This is just what I remember California wine when I was growing up here in Hollywood. My dad would pour great BVs from the fifties and sixties. You Don't a, you love that nuz? Yeah, you had a father that knew something. Mine, uh, he kept that three liter of Carlo Rossi <laughs> okay. next to the water heater for a month, and it was. Well, the annoying different. thing is, my dad still likes to pull out bottles of BV from the 60s, and it says $3.50 ah, with a yes. little price tag from I remember where he bought it Greenblatt's or something. Mm. No, this wine has so much depth, so much intrigue, mm. and the fact that it's. Napa Valley, not Napa Mountain fruit. It's unbelievable. Is it really? It's Valley floor fruit. It's to me. It sounds more. It tastes more like mountain fruit. <laughs> I'm 95 on this. Yeah. This is fabulous. Super wine. So complex. Such great balance. But still, the real character for me. You know, if you're in Napa, you shouldn't be making Bordeaux. You should be making Napa. And this tastes like Napa. That's but crazy. This is just the 09. Napa cab. Yes. Seventy nine ninety nine. 
Oh my god, that's superb wine. And honestly, it's drinkable now. Sure, it's a little bit tannic, but with a steak, with right. roast, with anything, it's just going to cut through that. It's going to be fabulous. And yeah. I don't know, the alcohol doesn't seem that much. What is it? 13.9. Now that's yeah. low alcohol in Napa. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, it's hard to believe that you could even put that on the label, but that's the, what that wine tastes like. So it's a perfect balance, complete mature. And I'm, I'm trying to use the word maturity uh -huh. rather than ripeness because it's so... Uh, misunderstood but this is a wine that has depth richness length where in california so often we're lacking acidity yeah this wine has the acidity to extend the flavors on the palate it's really really a wonderful wine this is exciting i haven't tasted this in ages mm. that's almost wow. a hybrid Napa Bordeaux. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. It says Bordeaux so much. It still has like a little, 09, 09 Bordeaux. It has a little grip in the yeah. back there. And again, but price again? Seventy nine ninety nine. Wow. For California, that's like chicken feed these days. Yeah, but also you you that has pedigree, that has a history. And and Randy Dunn hasn't changed the style and that's a delicious wine. Great producer, real tradition. I'll taste it again. In fact, uh, tasting it again. Yeah. Probably not the wine for our tacos, but nonetheless, uh, that's really good. Wow, great tasting. I really enjoyed that. That was an interesting tasting because you chose wines deliberately that went along the more traditional lines of what we remember about California, particularly yes. Napa Valley. And I just wish there were more people following this path instead of just going for the full-blown um, flashy style that'll, that are really hard to drink sometimes. And also the, the one thing that carries through in all of those, you'd be hard-pressed to say a word about the oak. Oh, absolutely. You don't see any oak at all. And that's, you know, in California, I, I, I used to say wines were over-oaked, mm -hmm. but it's not true. They're under-wined. Yeah. Uh, they don't have the structure to support whatever oak regime the winery is using. But these wines are so complete. They're all so perfect. So Great right. balance, wonderful expressions of where they're from. And hey, they're all really beautiful to yeah. drink. That's the one nice thing about Napa. You can usually get them, even if they're a little younger, you can still drink them. Sometimes with Bordeaux, a little younger, a little tougher to drink. Delicious. Great tasting. I could drink that one today. I just had a little sip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that with the Kudalas later. <laughs> okay.